Welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. I'm Grady, and today we have for you Creature Forge Overwhelming Swarm. This is a miniature line from WizKids from Magic the Gathering. Now, this video is going to be an unboxing, which means we're going to be taking out packages from this and opening them one by one. If you want to see the review of this set, which shows every single figure in the set and research lore behind them, rather than just me blathering on about whatever it is I see at the moment, uh, click the eye in the corner of the screen for that video once it's available. Obviously, if you're watching this right now and it just came out, then that review probably isn't done yet and it's not gonna be there. Um, but before we get to that, just wanted to thank our sponsor. This video is brought to you by The Deck of Many and Humblewood.net. This product came out in September of 2018 and is made by WizKids, which if you watch our channel, you'll know they make a lot of the miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder. If you want to see other videos of that, you can go ahead and click the eye in the corner of the screen to see our playlist of our miniatures reviews. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see any future reviews that come out. So let's start busting these open. Now, these figures are supposed to be to the same scale as the other miniatures that they produce for tabletop role-playing games but we will see. They come in packaging like this, and yes, each package contains only one figure, which is not very overwhelming, I know. I would suggest that if you want to experience that feeling, you cut open the top of the box and pour them all out at once. I'm so overwhelmed! Now I know what you're thinking, which is that Grady, Magic the Gathering is a collectible card game from Wizards of the Coast. Yes, exactly that phrasing. And so why are there miniatures? And the answer is that these are supposed to represent token creatures, which is why when you take them out, there is a color on the base to represent the color mana that they come with. And then here, this one's really hard to see, you're supposed to actually see what the token is called, beast here, and the stats for it, which is a 3-3. Three, three. Now, in case you couldn't actually see what was on the bottom of the base there, it's just the numbering, 14 out of 28, and then the copyright information, you can see that here. We'll be throwing any relevant information up on the screen as captions in the future, so you don't have to deal with these kind of fiddly things. Um, now that said, uh, you may have noticed that this actually, this set box that comes here actually only contains 24 packages and there's 28 unique creatures in this set. So buying one of these, which is also called a uh, gravity feed, you may see. Um, that doesn't mean anything. It just means that the, uh, the things drop by gravity as you pull more of them out if this was on a, in a retail store somewhere. And so, but basically in short, um, there, you're not gonna get all 28 because that's just not possible. Um, here we have a white bird. It's actually called bird. Okay. Um, so anyway, yeah. And then the other thing is that based on my research online, it, apparently there may be rarities associated with various of these creatures as well, with the lower numbers being more common and the higher numbers being rarer. Again, I don't really know how the distribution works for these. And so we will just have to find out and see if I get any duplicates or anything like that. Um, the other concern I have about this set is that it um, came from eBay because it was a lot cheaper on eBay. And so as it kind of just arrived this way open, so it is possible for people to swap in and out packaging. Um, and so, you know, this may not be representative of what came from the manufacturer. I think it is though. I don't see any reason why anyone would want to swap these out. Treasure. And, um, and you know, then again, nobody really has opened enough of these to have a sense of you know, where the rares might be or anything like that, like occurs in the booster packs for the miniatures or for magic sets. And so, you know, I don't, I don't expect anyone tampered with it. So we'll see, but so far we're getting a pretty good um, collection of things. No, you know, no repeats yet anyway. The other thing is, and please, you know, forgive me if I mess up anything, I am not a very proficient magic player. I'm relatively new to it, and I'm more of what I guess people call a Vorthos, which is somebody who really likes the lore of the game um, more than, you know, like the strategy and building. Oh, here we have a bear. Bears are cool. So that's a 2 2 on here. Um, and I also saw on the Magic Wiki, the Gamepedia one, 
um, which has a listing of these with the rarities and things like, like that. It also talks about um, which sets the token art is um, these figures are based on. Um, and it also indicates that some of them may be, uh, the stats may be wrong. So here it says a 2-2. I do know that a lot of 2-2 creatures in Magic are just called bears by default, but apparently the token may not be supposed to be a 2-2. I'll have to double check that. Um, for those of you who don't play Magic and don't know what tokens are, uh, tokens are basically uh, more cards, uh, but they're not, you know, unique creatures or spells in the game. And they're, they're, they're things that are summoned by those creatures or spells. And so, you know, you might have a planeswalker even that can, um, which is a, a special type of creature that stays on the board and has health like your um, players. And um, they might be able to, you know, just create, in this case, demons. And you'll just end up with a whole stack of demons on, on your table, on your, on your battlefield. And uh, they uh, are usually represented just by cards or by small cardboard tokens. But if you're feeling fancy, that's what these miniatures are for. They let you um, be able to bust these out. But as some people have pointed out online, there's no like hero click style turnable counter on the base of these to increment how many of these tokens are out there because they can stack up, especially these sapperlings. Um, been playing a lot of arena lately and uh, the sapperlings have been the bane of my existence and seeing like eight of them spawn against a green player and then, and then they buff them all and then you're dead. So, um, so in this case, I guess WizKids is trying to encourage you to buy a lot of these and have all sorts of tokens on the board. Um, I could see how that might get a little expensive. All right, to go with our sapperling here, we have a plant. Well, I thought it was a mushroom, but it is a plant. And these are all quite nice so far. We had heard that um, that there were some quality issues and that the sizes didn't scale properly with Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so far, I'm not seeing any glaring issues. Um, the some of the creatures may be a bit big or small. I mean, the bear is a little smaller than your standard like Icons of the Realms bear from Waterdeep Dragon Heist. I think that demon is definitely not as impressive as some of the ones you see in Avernus. But it hasn't been, it hasn't really been much of a problem yet. The only other issue, of course, if you're using these for dungeons and, oh, here's a nice little fairy rogue, but it could also easily be used as a sprite. Sprite. Um, and uh, I guess the only other concern you might have with these is that the bases are all the same size. And I guess they're close to a medium for Dungeons and Dragons, but obviously like the sprites are supposed to be smalls. Um, the bear is supposed to be a large creature. And so the base sizes don't correlate because that's not what they're intended to be used for. But again, that's not, it's not a huge problem. Um, no pun intended with the size huge. Aha, uh -huh. and now we have a goblin. This is a super cute goblin. Um, it's kind of a yellowish goblin, which is actually in line with the concept art for Dungeons and Dragons, less so for Pathfinder. But again, any color um, goblin is really fine. It's got cute clothes on, little skull, looks like he's ready to go into battle. A good haul so far though again still no repeats um got another wolf here this one's got some you know leather battle armor on and uh good to go with our little beast here from Morwen. Uh, gravity is not dropping these very well Oh, and now we have our first duplicate. 
So here is a Saffroling again. Um, a one, one creature, and let's just check its number. So it's number seven. So this would make it a common. And so in that case, it does make sense that we could potentially get two of these out of one of these 24 boxes. Now the 24 is as big as it gets. So there's not a situation like a case with the booster sets for um, Icons of the Realms or Pathfinder Battles where you can buy something and be guaranteed at least one of every, every item. Uh, which is again why our full review is gonna take a while because we're gonna have to open these, see what we get, and then buy the ones we're missing off of eBay. Um, and that's a little unfortunate. These also don't seem to be that popular in the sense that, you know, you can often find on eBay for these like booster set creatures. This is a spider with reach. That's kind of terrifying. Um, you can usually buy like sometimes on eBay and just search like complete collection, the set name. And you know, you might be able, they might sell you like exactly one of each of the minis from a given set. Uh, for, it's fairly expensive though. You're usually better off just buying a case because then you actually get duplicates and you can sell off the duplicates if you don't want them and make some of the money back. Uh, but you know, it's an option. And it's not an option here. There's no, nobody seems to be doing that. Um, the other thing is this was pitched as the inaugural line of tokens, uh, but it's been a year, over a year since the September, 2018. And uh, there have not been more of these. Um, so I don't know what's going on with this line, how it was received. Oh my, here is a soldier. These are really actually nice. Like the paint job is very detailed on them. It's very clean. The figures don't, aren't arriving bent. They actually feel fairly sturdy. This sword is definitely um, a more rigid plastic than the softer ones you see in the Icons of the Realms and Pathfinder Battles lines. So yeah, I mean, and yeah, this soldier is definitely the right size. You drop this down, other than the fact that the base is white other than black, um, it looks exactly like what you might get in one of the other WizKids lines. Um, so it's been great. Yeah, we put off doing this set for a while because we just thought they wouldn't be compatible with Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder. And again, you know, apart from those little, the, the base, basically. Uh, I don't I don't have an issue with them. I think we could drop these down and they would look great. Oh, and a pirate, I think. Pirate, yeah. And this one has menace as well. I guess a lot of these have, um, have some extra stat keywords associated with them and they're there too so that you don't have to um, go checking the cards you don't have them or you don't want to have both down on the table at once. Um, but yeah, that pirate looks great too. We opened a, a pirate themed set a little while ago, Skull and Shackles. You can go look that up or click the eye in the corner of the screen to see those. And again, like the detail's great. You can even, he's got eyes and kind of a goatee and you can, you can see it. it. It's completely table ready. Oh. Is this a unicorn? It does not seem to have a horn. Horse, okay. <laughs> Tell I don't get out a lot then. Um, it's a horse. It's a weird tail though, but it, you can see why I thought it was a mythological creature. So we're over halfway through now and Again, I, don't, I haven't been checking the numbers on these, so I don't know if we've gotten any rares. Um, I will look through it, and oh, here's a nice, very translucent figure. This is a spirit. These are nice. These are really nice. And like, you know, it looks like it's got things coming off of, off of the body that can make it a non-human or a humanoid creature. And you can just say it's, you know, tendrils of energy, or hair or clothing. And another one. Okay, I mean, I like them, but I don't like them enough to want duplicates. Uh, which one is this? This is number 10 of 28. So possibly still a common. I'll have to check the list. I was gonna print it out and put it to the side, but I figured that would just bog things down too much. I think I'm already talking too much as it is. 
Um, and another spider. So getting a lot of duplicates now, which is not encouraging. Um, although maybe it's good for you if you wanted tokens. If you have a spider summoning deck, then I hate you. But um, this would be good for you. Yeah, this is another low number, single digit. I can't quite, nine, number nine. Um, so that's how this goes. So I got a little paranoid about everything that I was saying and went to double check some of my facts just now. Um, and so yeah, the, 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 the uncommon start at number 13. And so all the duplicates we've gotten so far have been what the Gamepedia wiki lists, lists as common. Again, I haven't been able to, to verify um, those, the rarity, like nobody else is talking about the rarities online. And so I don't know where, the num where it came from, but so far it's matching up. Uh, here is our zombie. This has been a bane of my existence when I went to play War of the Spark um, when that first launched, and people just kept summoning those and murdering me. Um, uh, and so far we have gotten two rares. One it was the, the horse, and I think the other was the demon. Um, and... Uh, the horse is from Amonkhet, which explains why it, it looks faintly Egyptian. I also validated that that bear is indeed misprinted, um, even though there is such a thing as a bear 2-2 two -two with an extra ability. Um, the, this bear is supposed to be based on the token art from Khans of Tarkir, which uh, was a 4-4 stat. Here we have an insect. Okay, so yeah, so when we're talking about scale here, like the insect, the bird, the sprite, the plant, these are way too big for Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder scaling, uh, unless they're just giant insects, which do exist. Um, but that is, that is again another just little minor issue I wanna point out. I personally have no problem with minis being larger than they really should be to scale, because then you can actually see them and see what they are. And, and they're nicer because there can be more detailing on them. So I don't have a problem with that, uh, but some people might, so it's just worth pointing out. Yes, the ooze. The CGI render for this one is what sold me on trying to get the set to begin with, because it's just pretty and I like translucent things. Uh, and it, it, it's pretty good, it's nice. It lives up to expectations, I think. It's ooze. I thought it was gonna be a lot smaller, so I'm happy. Now, I really want that angel, but it's a rare, and so I don't know if we're going to get that. We've already gotten two rares so far, too, and so I'm thinking if we're not, if we're going to, it's possible that if we're going to be missing things at the end, which we will be, um, at least seven figures now, um, then the rares will be the first to go. Here's a Drake. This is nice. Um, looks like... Looks like one of some of the wind drakes from Ravnica, which is what we D&D players are most familiar with thanks to that release. Um, we did get a wind drake in the Ravnica set as it is, but um, it's always again good to have variation. Ooh, it's a mouse. Okay, this thing is these are cute. That's a rat. It's a rat with death touch. So uh, maybe not so ooh, cute. But hey, hey, you know, I'm touching it. I'm not dead. He can't touch me. He's frozen. Uh, oh gosh, the detail. The detail on these are nice. And this actually is. It's a giant rat, but it's actually not bad as terms of scaling goes for yeah, Pathfinder and D and D. Um, no, I mean, these are, yeah, these figures look good. Oh, and another duplicate fairy. Fairy, fairy rogue. Yeah, it's exactly the same as this one here, but uh, that's fine. You can always, oh, no, that was anticlimactic. We're done. All right, so let's recap our haul here. Out of 24 packages, we got four duplicates. Assuming that the rarities listed online were correct, we got all 12 of the commons, six out of the 10 uncommons, and two out of the six rares. Uh, the only other issue that I noticed once I started looking at these close up is that 
the two fairy rogues we got, they look a little different, don't they? Uh, one of them is missing a pair of wings. And so I don't know what happened here. I don't think, I didn't see anything fall off of them. So it's possible that they just came damaged. Um, so that is a possibility. That said, had I not had them to compare against each other, I wouldn't necessarily have noticed. Otherwise, I didn't notice any other damage or bending on these figures. So that is great. Um, in terms of any other potential issues, again, to recap, I compared the base sizes with the base sizes from the Pathfinder Battles and Icons of the Realms figures, and they do match exactly as mediums, so that's good. Basically, any creature that's a medium creature uh, matches the scaling of those other sets for tabletop RPGs from WizKids just fine. The issues arise when you get things that diverge from medium size because everything is scaled to that in this Creature Forge line. And so it, when you have small creatures, they're a bit bigger than they should be, which generally I don't think that's a huge problem. If you have large creatures, then they're gonna be a little smaller than they should be. And again, that's not too bad. And um, I would say that you could always just treat them as juveniles. Um, and you just tell them that hey, here's a little baby bear. Please don't kill it like you kill everything else you meet. So overall, I really like this line. I'm really impressed by the quality of it. And I think the figures are great. They look great in terms of their pose. They're painted very nicely. I, I don't know if this product was very successful, however. And I have some thoughts about that. Um, basically, I guess if you're looking at the magic community, right? Nobody is going to be building decks around what tokens they got out of these figures. Choosing to make these blind boxes where you are getting things at random one at a time uh, just doesn't sound that appealing. And they don't by themselves add anything to gameplay or to the cards that you're collecting like other accessories like boxes and play mats and sleeves and things like that do. And so these are just not must have even in terms of accessories. And so, you know, if it, again, if you are a magic player though and you like these tokens and you want to get some and you don't want to go getting like a bunch of drakes instead of goblins for your Krenko deck, then um, you can go on the aftermarket uh, and buy singles from various online stores or eBay um, and just get the exact ones you want. I've seen listings for one or sets of three or more. And so that's a way to do it without having to go through the randomness. Um, from a tabletop RPG perspective, of course, these are great as well, but you've got the weird colored bases, the base size is not being right. And so it's, these are great figures, I think, for Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder but they are, they just they don't quite fit in easily, and so it's just not on a lot of people's radars, which is really a shame. So all that said, I really do hope they make more of these. Um, maybe they need to change the way it's distributed somewhat. Maybe they need to, do need to sell them just as packs in like kind of open transparent packaging of different types of tokens. Maybe um, if they are trying to target the the tabletop RPG crowd, they probably need some sort of case option where you can go in and buy it and know like you're gonna get this many of each type and, and you're gonna be able to get one of each kind. Um, in terms of what future tokens uh, I would like to see if they do make more, um, I went online and just did a search of like, what are the most common magic tokens? And I think the article I found is a bit out of date, but it kind of gave you an idea of, okay, so these types of creatures have been printed in this many different types of sets. And so, you know, what, what was missing um, from this set of 28 figures that are still quite common. And there were quite a lot of compelling creatures out there. Um, there were elephants, uh, the Eldrazi spawn and scions. I don't know if that's really as interesting. Maybe there are Eldrazi fans out there, but anyway, um, elf warriors, who doesn't like elves? And then Thopters. So one thing I did notice in this set is that there were a bit of a dearth of blue and red creatures. There were a lot of greens and a decent chunk of whites and blacks. And so Thopters seemed like a notable omission. And I'm not just saying that because I'm wearing Azorius colors. I wasn't actually intending to even. I was looking for a blue hoodie so that I could look like Jace because Jace is awesome. And I'm kidding, no one likes Jace. Other creatures that we could have, elementals, goats, a clue token? 
I don't really know what that is. If you know, please let me know in the comments. Um, because I play Arena a lot, uh, other notable omissions to me were, well, cats. I mean, cats are always a notable omission if they're not present. And vampires. Vampires would be great because not only would they have a black base, they're medium creatures, and D&D players are suckers for vampires. So if you want money, whiz kids, you should make more vampires. And I think that's about it. Stay tuned if you want to see our full review of all the figures in this set once we get those in. Um, and make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified of future videos from our channel. If you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate it if you leave us a like as well. Um, before we go, wanted to thank our sponsor, The Deck of Many and Humblewood.net. So Humblewood is out now. It is a new fifth edition D&D campaign setting featuring a new forest setting and 10 new playable races. You can play as five different types of birds, five different types of woodland animals, including a raccoon. Who doesn't want to be a raccoon? The only downside, you can't play a cat. Yeah, I know, it's very disappointing. Um, there's lots of things not including cats these days. I don't understand it. But anyway, Humblewood, it is great. It has a, um, it is a fully fledged uh, setting. It has new um, adventures. It has uh, new playable classes and magic items. It comes with all sorts of accessories. So if you're looking for more minis, they have unpainted minis of all sorts of creatures in their campaign. It has uh, reference cards and animated spell cards that you can get uh, to supplement your game as well. Or you can just get the base set and have some maps, have some paper standees, and just play your heart out as an owl. Owls are great. Owls are so cute. Look at that owl. It's so cute. It wants you to buy Humblewood. All right. Thank you. That's it for today. We appreciate you watching. Theo will be back from vacation soon, so you don't have to deal with me anymore. And uh, we hope you have a great, we hope you're doing well, and we'll see you next time at the Gallon Goblin. <laughs> <laughs>